Let's start with the built-in patterns. Your 1602 knitting machine comes packed with four four-color cards showing the different fancy stitch patterns you can do. But this is only the beginning. Once you're familiar with your machine, there's no limit to the fancy stitches you can create. Find the card marked 7 and 8 in the lower left-hand corner. All of these patterns are designated with the letter A followed by a number. These are the easiest patterns to knit, so we'll start here. Find pattern A4 on the card. This is a tuck stitch pattern. Look at the instructions. The first symbol you see is a small skein of yarn marked A or B. Yarn weights are designated either A, B, or C depending on their stocking stitch size. A yarns are fine and have a stocking stitch size of up to 4. B yarns are medium and have a stocking stitch size of up to 8. We are using a B weight yarn. C yarns have a stocking stitch size of up to 12. D yarns are only suitable for a special technique called weaving effect. Yarns knitted with a stitch size of up to 8 are suitable for this pattern. The next picture indicates a carriage. This is your back carriage. Whenever a single carriage is pictured, it is always your back carriage because it's the back needle bed that is capable of electronic needle selection. The tuck key is shown, which means that this is the key that must be pressed. The needle return buttons are neutral. The next square shows any extra gadgets that come with your knitting machine that might be needed to knit this pattern. In this case, none are needed. Pattern A5 shows the second color yarn guide. Pattern A1 shows the weaving effect brushes. You must use these devices when knitting these patterns. In the case of pattern A4, none are needed. The next square shows a picture of the selection box. It shows all of the switches correctly placed. The program changer switch is in the lower position, and from right to left, the machine is on, the reverser is positive, the row repeat switch is up, and every other needle selection is activated. Soon all of the switches and their functions will be very familiar to you. For now, it's easy to simply follow the pictures. The cursor stops are already set up 15 needles beyond the last needle in working position on the back bed. Be sure to listen for the click at the end of every row. It's easy as this to knit pattern A4. Every other needle is knitting, and all of the others in the row are tucking because that's the button that is pressed on your carriage. To knit several rows of stocking stitch between patterns, turn off the selection box, press the knit key, and go. Try pattern A2. It indicates yarn A or B, and in this case the cancel key is pushed. The switches remain in the same place as they were for pattern A4. This time, instead of creating a tuck stitch pattern, we're creating what is known as a slip stitch. Selected needles are knitting while all others in the row are doing nothing because the cancel key is pushed. This is called slipping a stitch. When you're knitting, it is very important to create a smooth, even motion with your carriage, or you could cause mistakes in your rows. Be sure to knit smoothly and evenly across the row. If you have trouble with this, use both hands to make the knitting motion more even. Be sure to listen for the click at the end of every row. Find pattern A7. It has the tuck and circular key pressed. Both of the keys stay down together. Selected needles will knit, and as the carriage is passed from right to left, non-selected needles will tuck. When the circular key is pressed, all needles will knit when the carriage is passed from left to right. Pattern A9 is a special pattern. It is a pattern with needles in holding position. Look at the picture of the back carriage. The left needle return button is pointing up, or towards the buttons. The right hand needle return button is pointing down or away from the buttons. If this looks confusing, use the carriage buttons as a reference. The knit key is pushed as indicated by the picture of the carriage. Can you guess what will happen as the carriage is passed to the left? All selected needles move to holding position. The needle return button in the upper position will always allow selected needles to move to holding position. As the carriage moves from right to left, the right needle return button moved to the neutral position. You must push it down to the lowest position every time the carriage is at the left. With the left needle return button pointing down or away from the carriage buttons, 
All needles in holding position will knit a row, then move back to working position one. Again, knit to the left. Selected needles move to holding position. Press the right needle return button down to the lowest position, then knit to the right. For all of the single bed, single color A patterns, simply set up your cursor stops, set your selection box switches, and your carriages according to the diagrams, then knit. The two color single bed patterns are called ferrile designs. For this technique, you must use your second color yarn guide. This will allow you to knit with two colors simultaneously. Choose a sport weight yarn in a contrasting color and thread the left side of your tension unit. Fasten the yarn end into the clip on the tension unit. Look at pattern A15. It is known as a bird's eye pattern in which every other needle will knit the main color and all other needles will knit the contrast color. The selection will reverse every row. You can use fine, medium, and heavy weight yarns for this technique. The back carriage indicates that the needle return buttons are pointing up towards the buttons. Don't let the picture fool you. The needle return buttons are pointing up towards the carriage buttons. The small arrow pointing to the tab under the stitch size dial indicates that the jacquard key is to be pressed. This is done simultaneously with the knit key. Check to see that the jacquard key is completely recessed under the stitch size dial. Again, press the two keys together at the same time. Whenever you're using the second color yarn guide, the carriage is always set just like this. It doesn't matter which design you're knitting. If you're using the second color yarn guide, the carriage is set exactly like this. To attach the second color yarn guide, find the beige levers at the center front. They are attached to springs that hold the second color yarn guide firmly at the front of the back carriage. Push these levers to the center. Find the metal tabs at the upper right and left of the yarn guide. Slide these tabs into the corners of the back carriage adjacent to the carriage yarn guide. Hold the second color yarn guide in place, then push out on the springs. Check to see that the second color yarn guide is very firmly in position. Do not push up or down on the beige levers. Slide the levers in or out only. Again, to remove the second color yarn guide, slide the springs to the center and lift it away from the back carriage. To insert it, press the levers to the center, concentrate on the metal tabs, place them in the corners of the back carriage, then extend the levers to hold the second color yarn guide in place. Use your forefinger to press the contrast color yarn into the slit of the second color yarn guide. Do not use a sewing motion. Draw the yarn under the white plastic tab, then to the side of the knitting. Manually knit the last stitch on the right with a second color yarn. Bring the needle up so that the stitch that is on the needle falls behind the latch. Lay the yarn into the hook of the needle, then draw a new stitch through. This will hold the contrasting yarn firmly in place. Drop the yarn tail down between the needle beds. Once your carriage is set properly and the second color yarn guide is inserted and threaded, you can set the selection box switches. Look at pattern A15. The program changer switch is in the lower position. The selection box is on, the reverser is positive, the row repeat switch is in the center indicating a single row function, and every other needle selection is activated. Knit smoothly and evenly for several rows. Both colors are knitting at the same time. In fair isle knitting, which is single two color knitting such as this, it is especially important to use your edge claws. The floats on the back of the fabric cause the knitting to draw firmly to the center and the edge needles can't move easily. You could even drop a stitch. To prevent this problem, use your edge claws and move them up every 10 rows. To knit plain rows of your main color between each pattern, simply turn off your selection box. With the selection box in the off position, there are no needles being selected to knit the second color. Therefore, you'll knit plain rows of your main color. The difference between pattern A15 and pattern A10 is simply the double row function. If you press the row repeat switch to the upper position, each row will repeat twice and your knitting will look like this. The switches on your selection box are simply choices to make depending on how you want your knitted fabric to look. 
Pattern A5 shows a slash through the symbol for the reverser and a times four sign at the top and the bottom. This means knit four rows with the reverser in the upper position and four rows with the reverser in the lower position. Four rows up and four rows down. Pattern A8 shows the same symbol with a times one sign. Knit one row with the reverser in the upper position and one row with the reverser in the lower position. The knitting will show vertical stripes. All of the A patterns are based on every other needle selection and whether they are one color or two color patterns, they create small repeated designs in the knitting.